Hi, everybody. I hope you're all doing well. So today we are here with a comedy. So as always, the monologue is in the description below. Take a moment to pause me, read it, and come on back. So today we are looking at a show called The Winter's Tale, which is a bit odd in Shakespeare's canon. There are a handful of plays that are not fully comedy, but not fully tragedy either. And a lot of times they get placed into the comedy uh, category because they're not like a Macbeth or a Hamlet where, you know, the main character dies at the end, but they're not entirely happy either. Winter's Tale definitely falls into that, and Winter's Tale is really a tale of two stories. The first half is one story and is very tragic. A king, Leontes, believes that his best friend, another king named Polixenes, and yes, these are their actual names, has had an affair with Leontes' wife, Hermione, and it basically ends up where Leontes loses his best friend, ends up imprisoning his wife, who dies in childbirth, he loses his firstborn son, his daughter gets put out to the wilds, his advisor gets eaten by a bear. Yeah, that actually happens. Um, Winter's Tale is home to the most famous of English stage directions, Exit, Pursued by a Bear. And then the second half of the show is the story of that daughter who was left out to the wilds and saved by a couple of shepherds and how she falls in love with the son of King Polixenes and Polixenes chases his son and her out of the country and they run to Leontes who has had a major change of heart, welcomes them and eventually welcomes back his friend Polixenes and generally ends things fairly happily for the show. Yeah, it's confusing. It, I don't know if I can explain it better than that. Um, so the character we're looking at today is actually a relatively minor one in all of this, and I haven't even mentioned him yet. His name is Atolicus. Uh, he is a thief, a rogue, a scoundrel, and the fool. Now, in Shakespeare, there is an archetypal character called the fool, and you see this fool character in... A great deal of his shows. In Macbeth, there's a character called the Porter. In Hamlet, it's the Grave Diggers. There's these characters who are very kind of lighthearted and kind of happy go lucky, and they seem to know a lot more than they should. They put on like this air of of idiocy, but they're actually very smart. And this is a couple of things. So in Shakespeare's day, one the Fool character is in so many plays is because he had to write a part for his actor who played the Fool. So today, when we do shows, we audition a whole bunch of people and we pick from this group of people that audition. In Shakespeare's day, most acting came from troops. And what they were is they it was a group of people who, you know, however many there were, who all were in every show. And so the shows were not written and then you brought in actors. The shows were written for these actors. And so the fool part had to be written for the guy who played the fool, even if it was one set of lines, like the porter who only appears in one scene in Macbeth. So, Autolycus is the fool here, and like most fools, he generally knows what's going on. He's got a much better view at the whole situation than most of the other characters. Now, Autolycus only appears in the second half of the show, and basically he shows up and finds out that the princess who was abandoned to the wilderness, her adopted father, the shepherd, is holding a big party, and he decides, hey, I'm gonna go crash that. And he does, and during the course of it, he starts stealing from everybody. He sells all these, you know, tiny little doodads and bobbins that he has, and then steals purses from everybody and this monologue that we're looking at is a very character driven one in that it shows him gloating afterward it Autolycus is actually one of Shakespeare's fools that actually gets what probably should have come to him uh, in that eventually he ends up being forced to work for the uh, adopted parents uh, the adopted father and brother of the princess 
he gets caught in the end. Most fools are able to scamper off into the sunset and don't get any punishment for their for their ridiculousness. Autolycus does. So this is actually kind of this ironic thing where he's crowing about how good he is at thievery, how excellent his night was, and it really sets up very awesomely for a bit later on when he ends up falling flat on his face. So, we're going to take a look at this one and uh, see how it is. <laughs> what a fool honesty is, and trust his sworn brother, a very simple gentleman. I have sold all my trumpery. Not a counterfeit stone, not a ribbon, glass, pomander, brooch, table book, ballad, knife, tape, glove, shoe tie, bracelet, horn ring to keep my pack from fasting. <laughs> They throng who should buy first, as if my trinkets had been hallowed and brought a benediction to the buyer, by which means I saw whose purse was best in picture, and what I saw to my good use I remembered. My clown, who uh, wants but something to be a reasonable man, grew so in love with the wench's song that he would not stir his petty toes till he had both tune and words, <laughs> which so drew the rest of the herd to me that all their other senses stuck in ears. You might have pinched a placket. It was senseless. T'was nothing to geld a cod piece of a purse. I could have filed keys off that hung in chains. <laughs> no hearing, no feeling, but my sir's song and the admiring the nothing of it. So in this time of lethargy, I picked and cut most of their festival purses, and had not the old man come in with a woobub against his daughter and the king's son and scared my chaffs from the chaff, I had not left a purse alive in the whole army. <laughs> and that's it for today. Have a good one. Bye!